Father, we thank you for this day and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for us and you guys have said. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, hold on for a minute. Okay, now we have our uh, healthy living segment, my sister Michelle, and then we're going to move right into our study, brother and sister. I am excited about what I got to share today, by God's grace. I was impressed to share something different. And I believe you'll be blessed as I was already been blessed by it. I think, and I believe after we finish this study, I believe we all will have a, a view and a taste of the earthly Canaan, of the heavenly Canaan. Amen? So, Michelle, if you go right into your um, Help the Living statement so we can begin our study today. Praise the Lord, everyone. Our healthy living segment this evening will be on the topic weakened immune system remedies and and it, it actually says autoimmune but i'm i'm literally just going to read verbatim what it says in our natural remedies encyclopedia and then um, open it up to any comments and for the sake of time this can be found on page 309 in the natural remedies encyclopedia and the reason I chose this topic for this evening is because um, there was some there was a connection to the chocolate, the comment I made this morning about chocolate. And um, I found that the Holy Spirit oftentimes will reinforce things that he shows us. Then he'll show us more things when we're going down a path of wellness. So um with that, quickly, um, our help, for those who may be hearing this for the first time, our healthy living segments are um, basically to reveal and to uh, show us, help us to become students of God's natural remedies, um, which we know that there are eight laws of health that God has given us. Um, to keep keep us um, alive and thriving and that they go hand in hand with his moral law and the the eight laws of health in the order that they're presented in spirit of prophecy and this is coming from ministry of healing page 127 and they are pure air sunlight abstemiousness rest exercise proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. So with that, again, the topic for this evening is a weakened autoimmune system. And um, one thing that stood out to me, a few quick things that stood out to me that I'll just spot read. It says that... Um, Autoimmune disorders can result from conditions ranging from rheumatoid arthritis to kidney disease. Um, this is very important. Listen to these next two. Medicinal drugs such as cortisone, prednisone, and chemotherapy cause immune depression. So they, they actually weaken the immune system. Other causes are vaccinations and immunization, immunizations against common um, childhood and epidemic diseases. So, wow, you know, there you have it. You know, a lot of these vaccinations, um, God has not, and I shouldn't even say a lot in period, um, mm -hmm. God is not in vaccines. And, um, and then, Going on, this is the paragraph I wanted to, or one other key point I want to read, two, two more actually, and before I read the remedies, it says that nutritional deficiencies um, are often linked. It says, according to some natural healing specialists, these are doctors that specialize in um, natural remedies. They, they say that they believe that any infectious disease may be considered an immune deficiency problem. In other words, if, 
anything we're experiencing when, when it comes to diseases, a lot of natural doctors will tell you the call, the problem is our immune system. Um, we're not, it, there's a deficiency. We're not getting the proper nutrition. And so what that tells me is if, if we, as a preventive measure, if, if we can, um, keep our diets in check and, and do what God would have us to do on with our daily diets, these diseases wouldn't come upon us. Amen. Amen. Um, a, a couple more things before I read the remedies. It says meat contains hormones, antibiotics, and bacteria, which bring on disease. And then here's to that point I was making earlier about chocolate. It says alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, chocolate, and a high sugar diet weaken the immune system. So I found that interesting. Now we know chocolate contains caffeine, mm -hmm. but it lists it separate from caffeine. So that lets me know that it's not just the caffeine in chocolate that makes it bad for us that um the sugar i think i heard brother roy say and yeah um, Amen. it's it's just it's again and one more reason why i'm giving up chocolate saying you heard it here first Amen. all right so moving on to natural remedies the natural remedies and i'm just going to read this verbatim because it's so short and i and i believe it's really important for us to hear, keep hearing this and we can go back later and listen. And of course, if you've got the book, you can read it for yourselves. And I'm on page 310 and it reads, eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, obtain adequate protein from vegetables, not from meat, eat broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, onions, garlic, and similar worthwhile food. Eat whole grains, nuts, and legumes. Skip the junk food. Maintain a balanced lifestyle, obtaining enough sunlight, exercise, and rest. Amen. High doses of vitamin A in the form of carrot juice or beta-carotene beta are especially helpful. Yeah, exactly. That, along with vitamin C, 2,000 milligrams, may be the most important vitamins for the immune system. I'm going to repeat that. Um, vitamin A in the form of beta carotene or carrot juice, along with vitamin C, 2,000 milligrams, may yeah. be the most important vitamins for the immune system. Essential fatty acids, i.e. flaxseed oil, two tablespoons, zinc, 1.5 milligrams, three times a day, selenium, 300 to 900 micrograms per day, germanium, 50 milligrams daily. Vitamin B complex, especially B6, 300 milligrams, B12, 1,000 micrograms, folic acid, 2,000 micrograms, pantothenic acid, 50 micrograms, and vitamin E, 400 to 800 IUs, and I did look it up, IU stands for international units. And, mm -hmm. and last but not least, immunostimulant herbs include Echinacea root, dandelion, red clover, kelp, garlic, astragalus, and alfalfa, Sister Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so so with, with that, I will open it up to any comments at this time. And if there are none, I will turn it over to Brother MK. Okay. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Want to stop once again? Amen. 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 Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, we join in heaven, Lord. We once again, come into thy presence, Lord. I pray, plead, please. Don't mean that the saints will be blessed as you bless me. Lord, as we look into the subject, Lord, a lot of times we look at the things of this earth. Father, as we venture, let our minds be taken by the Holy Spirit to heaven and see what you gave our prophet that we may behold one day in real faith. Father, as we break the bread of life, as we take the journey, Lord, by faith into heaven, bless us so we can see ourselves there. You have done all we can do through the name of Jesus Christ. You said, well done, good and faithful servant. And into, the joy, and into your rest. Then only, Father, then only can we say, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, can somebody mute this? I'm getting a lot of feedback from someone somewhere. Okay. All right, brothers and sisters, today's topic is, I was so... The Lord, you know, we we a lot of times, and a lot of time I deal with, you know, the mark of the beast in the time of trouble and what's going to persecute the saints. But the Lord impressed me as I was looking out the window, thinking about the things of heaven. He says, share with the brothers and sisters what it's going to be like when you get to heaven. Now, I don't need to speculate. Because we have the prophet that gave us what's going to, what we can expect when we get to heaven. Amen. And so, therefore, brothers and sisters, uh, this, the, the day's subject is called 144,000 and the living saints. The 144,000 and the living saints. So, brothers and sisters, let us turn to Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 6. Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 6. Revelation chapter 4, 1, 2, 6. And please let me know when you get there. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Get there, say amen. Don't forget, y'all, everyone is on mute, so don't forget. So, Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen, okay. Revelation chapter, brother and sister, I am excited about what I'm about ready to share. I mean, the Lord has really, I mean, if this don't get you, if this, but what we read today, if this don't get you on the right track, nothing will, brothers and sisters. Nothing will. So Revelation 4, 1 through 6 says this. After this, I beheld, and behold, a door opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard as the word of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and set on the throne. And he that sat on it was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and a rainbow around the throne, and the sight like unto an emerald. And around about the throne, four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, a sea of glass like unto a crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Brothers and sisters, let us go to Revelation chapter 15. Revelation 15, verses 1 and 2. Revelation 15, verse 1 and 2. You said, when you just say amen, please. So I know we're there. We don't want to. Amen. 15, 1 and 2. Amen. Yes. I don't want to leave anyone behind, but we're not in a rush. Amen. It is still the holy Sabbath hours. Praise be to God. Revelation 15, 1 and 2 says, And I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues with them was filled up with the wrath of God. And I saw it, and I, and I saw it, it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory of the beast and of his image and of his mark and over the name, number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. And I want to read verse three. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous, 
Thy works, Lord God, Lord God Almighty, just and true. Thy ways, thou King of saints. And let us go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And MK, when you read Revelation 4, verses 1 through, where did you stop? Verse 6. Thank you. Amen. Revelation, uh, Hebrews chapter 1. One and two. I'm sorry, Hebrew, yeah, Hebrews chapter one, verse one and two. Yeah, Hebrews chapter one, verse one and two. Can someone read that for us? Hebrews chapter one. Yep, verse one and two. I believe. Hebrews one and two. Uh, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in, these, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, with the S, worlds. There you go. You saw that. That's the, Ken, you answer the question before I can ask it. Praise be to God. You see that, brother and sister? Amen. Can, emphasize it? can someone go to, can we go to Hebrews 11? Hebrews 11. And I say, I want to say uh, verse one and two and three. And Ken, I want you, Ken, since you're so elegant reader, can you read when you get there? Hebrews 11, one, two, and three. Yeah. All right. Praise be God. Uh, everyone there? Is everyone there yet, brothers and sisters? Amen. Okay. All right. Amen. Amen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were, in, were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So again, it says what? World. So in other words, it's not a mistype, is it? No. So we know there's more than one world, amen, this earth. There's other worlds out there. That's, that's not fallen. Amen. Praise God. There's other inhabitants that live in strict obedience to the word of God. Well, I got a question. You say other inhabitants or at least the world? I always have kind of known that God must have created worlds because we know this isn't the only, earth isn't the only planet. I think there are other galaxies, correct? Well, I mean, the, the, the people call the galaxy, we call the, the Bible and the Spirit of Father call the worlds. Other, I got, there are other earths other than this earth. Correct. And so, therefore, those who have not fallen, who have lived in strict obedience to the word of God, and who also express the fully image of Jesus. So, brothers and sisters, we're going to adventure, and we're going to look at... Uh, a couple, uh, quite a few things in the spirit of prophecy. And it, my heart rejoiced when I was reading. I've read this before, but I went a little deeper this time. And when I say I went a little deeper, I read a little bit more and to get different insights. So please, if you have a comment, uh, as I read, stop me. I'm going to be looking down. So if I don't look up and recognize hands, just, hey, brothers, don't I got a comment? Because I'm going to be looking down and reading as well. Amen. So I begin to read 144,000. That's what the prophet says. The Lord has given me a view of other worlds. And you see why I read that? Why you, you see why I had us to read that? Because the spirit of the prophet said worlds. And she was like, I, I don't believe that. But we want to see the Bible to the law and to the testament. Amen? Amen. The Lord has given me. I'm reading from Venice Home. First. 543 chapter 2. 543 paragraph 2. The Lord has given me a view of other worlds. Wings was given me, and an angel attended me from the city to a place that was bright and glorious. The grass of the place was living green, and the birds that wobble a sweet song. The inhabitants of the place were all of, of all sizes. They were noble, majestic, and lovely. They bore the express image of Jesus, and their countenance beamed with holy joy, expressive of the freedom and happiness of the place. 
I asked one of them why they were so much more lovely than those on the earth. The reply was, we have lived in strict obedience to the commandments of God and have not fallen by disobedience like those on the earth. I begged of my attendant angel to let me remain in that place. I could not bear the thought of coming back to this dark world again. Then the angel said, you must go back and if you are faithful, you with the 144,000 shall have the privilege of visiting all the worlds and bearing the hand and work of God. Amen, brothers and sisters. What a blessing. What a blessing, is it not? Amen. And this come out of Christian experience and temperance and teaching. Christian experience and, and teachings, CET. Christian experience and teachings by Ellen T. White. Start on page 57, paragraph one. Our first vision. It was not long after the passing of time in 1844 that my first vision was given me. I was visiting Miss Haynes in, in Portland, a dear sister in Christ whose heart was knit with mine. Five of us, all who, all, five of us, all women were kneeling quietly at the family altar. While we were praying, the power of God came upon me and I had never felt it before, as I have never felt it before. It seemed to be surrounded with light and to be rising higher and higher from the earth. I turned to look for the Advent people in the world, but could not find them. When the voice said to me, look again and look a little higher. And brother and sister, she said she looked for the Advent people of the world and could not find them. Y'all know why that, that was? They had not, um, they they received the mark of the beast. They didn't make it in. And I want you, um, okay, well, hold it. Um, okay. Now, what did, what did I, what word did I use? Advent. But what word did I did not use? Seventh day Adventist. Okay, so that's the difference between what? Advent and Seventh day Adventist. Amen. He said, look again. Well, let me read this. I turned to look for the Advent people in the world, but could not find them. When the boy said to me, look again and look a little higher. At this, I raised my eyes and saw a straight and narrow path. Because we remember, brother, 1844, some of them turned back. When Christ didn't come, some of them turned back. Some of the Advent people turned back. Only very few kept going and kept studying the word of God. Hmm. At this, I raised my eyes and saw a straight and narrow path cast up high above the world. On this path, the Advent people were traveling to the city, which was at the further end of the path. They had a bright light set up behind them at the beginning of the path, which the angels told me was the midnight cry. See Matthew 25, verse 6. This light shone all along the path. And y'all know the Matthew 25, right? Don't know involving Matthew 25. The wise and foolish version, brothers and sisters. Five had oil and, and took note of oil with their lamps. All of them had lamps. But the, the wise, the foolish did not take oil with their lamps. The wise took oil with their lamps. And we know the oil represents to what? The Holy Spirit. This light shone all along the path and gave light for their feet so that they might not stumble. If they kept their eyes fixed on Jesus, who was just before them, leading them to the city, they were safe. But some grew weary and said that the city was a great way off, and they expected to have entered it before. Then Jesus would encourage them by raising his glorious right arm, and from his arm came a light which waved over the Advent band, and they shouted, Hallelujah. Others rashly denied the light behind them and said that it was not God that had led them up so far. The light behind them went out, leaving their feet in perfect darkness. And they stumbled and lost sight of the mark and of Jesus and fell off the path down into the dark and wicked world below. Soon we heard the voice of God like many waters which gave us the day and hour of Jesus' coming. The living saints, 144 in number, knew and understood the voice while the wicked thought it was thunder and an earthquake. When Jesus spoke the time, he poured upon us the Holy Ghost and our faces began to light up and shine with the glory of God as Moses did when he came down from Mount Sinai. 
program, page 58, paragraph one. 144,000 were all sealed and perfectly united. On their foreheads was written, God, New Jerusalem, and a glorious star containing Jesus' new name. At our, house, at our happy state, holy state, the wicked were enraged and would rush bodily up to lay hands on us, to thrust us into prison. When we would stretch forth the hands in the name of the Lord, and they would fall helpless to the ground. Then it was that synagogue of Satan knew that then they then was that the synagogue of Satan knew that God had loved us, who could wash one another's feet and salute the brother with a holy kiss, and they worship at our feet. Paragraph two, page fifty-eight. Soon our eyes were drawn to east, to the east, for a small black cloud had appeared, about half as large as a man's hand. Which, were, which we all knew was the sign of the Son of Man. We all in solemn, solemn silence gazed on the cloud as it drew near and became lighter glorious and still more glorious till it was a great white cloud. The bottom appeared like fire. A rainbow was over the cloud while around it were 10,000 angels singing a most lovely song and upon it sat the Son of Man. His hair was white and curly and lay on his shoulders. And upon his head were many crowns, his feet as the appearance of fire. His, in his right hand was a sharp sickle, in his left a silver trumpet. His eyes were a flame of fire which searched his children through and through. Then all faces gathered pilgrims, and those that had gotten rejected, and those who God had rejected gathered blackness. Then we all cried out, who shall be able to stand? Is my robe spotless? Then the angel ceased to sing, and there was some time of awful silence when Jesus spoke. Those who have clean hands and a pure hearts shall be able to stand. My grace is sufficient for you. At this, at this, our faces lit it up, and joy filled every heart. And the angel scrubbed a note higher and sung again, while the cloud drew still near, near the earth. Paragraph 3, page 58. Then Jesus sent a trumpet. Sounded as he descended on the cloud and wrapped in flames of fire. He gazed on the graves of the sleeping saints, then raised his eyes and hands to heaven and cried, Awake, 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 ye that sleep in the dust, and arise. Then there was a mighty earthquake. The graves opened and the dead came up clothed with immortality. The 144,000 shouted, Hallelujah, as they recognized their friends who had been torn from them by death. And in the same moment, we were changed and caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Page 59, paragraph 1. We all entered the cloud together and were seven days ascended to the sea of glass. When Jesus brought the crowns and with his own right hand placed them on our heads, brother and sister, do you know why we took, no, you know, really it doesn't take seven days. When the angel came to Gabriel, it didn't take him seven days for Gabriel to get from heaven to, to, to earth. Y'all know that, right? Amen. Only the moment to out, and God can appear. <laughs> so, brother and sister, why would it take seven days to descend to heaven? I remember the answer you told us before, but I'll let someone else. What was that question again? Why? Okay, let me read it and ask the question. We all, entered, we all entered the cloud together and were seven days ascended to the sea of glass when Jesus brought the crowns and with his own right hand placed them on our heads. And the, and the question, why did it take seven days to enter the heaven, to enter uh, to get to heaven? And you know it doesn't take seven days to get to heaven. We all know that, right? But why did it take us seven days to get to heaven? The Bible, seven represents, symbolizes Perfection and completion. And we know that Ezekiel 114 tells us that the living creatures representing the angels ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. So I thought that that's, that's the amount of time that one can measure that, that it takes to get to heaven, even back to earth. Okay. Anyone else? I, Hold on. I, I would, uh, Hold on I would go along with. Brother, oh, brother Wayne's not finished. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. Oh, no, that's, that's when the Sabbath comes, and the seventh day. And some who have never actually kept the Sabbath 
We wouldn't have, otherwise wouldn't have been able to enter it, but we'll, we'll enter Keeping the Sabbath into heaven and to keeping the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Now, Amen. Brother Tony, go ahead. Then we're going to come back to what Brother Wayne said. Brother Tony, please. No, no, I agree with Brother Wayne. Yeah. Everyone will everyone will keep us out, keep the Sabbath. Okay, so somebody simplified for that us. But Brother Wayne and Brother Tony have spoken truthfully. But let's let's why that happened? Why why is that what can we have do we have a scripture to support that? And and, and the answer is yes. And why? Because we know there are some reformers who never kept the Sabbath, right? But was faithful with the God has gave them, right? We know that. Because the message they gave at the time. Was to talk about what the, what the beast was in Reformation. So, brothers and sisters, as Brother Tony and Brother Wayne and Brother Tony so spoke about, and Brother Tony agreed with what Brother Wayne was saying, amen, because it's true. And, and why is it true? Because, brothers and sisters, Revelation 14, the Bible is true, amen, from Genesis Revelation, all the Bible is true, there's no error. So, let's turn to Revelation 22 14. Revelation 22, 14. And can someone read that? When we get to it, everybody let everyone, everybody get to it first. I'll read it whenever you want to read it. Okay. Well, I hope this is not boring, brother, since I'm excited. I'm just excited. I know a lot of times we don't like a lot of reading, but sometimes, brother, since we just need to listen to the word of God. Sure, that I'm telling you, I can't wait till we get into heaven, brothers and sisters. When the spirit of prophecy, I mean, it's such a blessing, man. And I pray to God we will get there. MK, while everyone is getting there, can you repeat the name of the um, book that you were reading from when you were reading page 58, paragraphs one and two and 50? Yeah, Christian Experience and Teachings by Ellen G. White. Christian okay. Experience and Teachings, yes. C-E-T, Christian Experience and Teachings. And most of this is also found in other writings as well. Can, uh, Brother Ken, I believe we all are there. Revelation 22, 14. The word of God says, blessed are they that do his commandments. They may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So uh, is there a nine commandments or 10 commandments? 10. So therefore, if anyone, if Martin Luther them could enter in without keeping the commandments of God, then everybody can enter in, with, can enter in without keeping the commandments of God. See what I'm saying? So this scripture had to be fulfilled, brother and sister. So therefore, is Martin Luther them and the reformers and John Huss and Calvin, they were in the reformers, they were giving a message for their day. And the message, we, I see, brother, uh, Roy, are you trying to say something? I can keep seeing your hand. Okay, maybe maybe it wasn't. So and then so therefore, uh, we see that the message that God given us in that time is is a strange message was involved the Sabbath. Amen. That's our that that is our present truth for the day. Strange message was involved the mark of the beast and the Sabbath, the rights by faith, the sealing message, brothers and sisters. So therefore, we see that it don't like Brother Wayne them said it doesn't take seven days to get to heaven, but we all stop. And those who did not keep the Sabbath on earth would have to keep at least one Sabbath before they go to heaven, get into heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Any, uh, Brother Roy, you, I saw your hand. Was you trying to some? I didn't. I didn't know what you were trying to say. No, something. I, no, I was. No, I was just listening. Saying, yeah, Amen. I said, I had you had sent me that through a, a nugget. I think it was on my, this morning. Okay. I had already read it. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead, brother Wayne. The, uh, this is this is a most profound yeah. example of the righteousness of Christ Amen. by faith. By faith, the faith of Jesus, faith in Him. Amen. And because we again, we here's here it is again. Blessed are they that do His commandments. Mm -hmm. We won't be sitting up in heaven telling one another, "This is what I did." I hope I get to that, Brother Wayne. Okay, okay, uh, okay. No, 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 no. You, you just—I I don't know if I'm gonna get to that because I got so much to share. I don't even think I'm gonna get to everything that 
but I, I believe. What, but brother Wayne, do you not, brother Wayne? Can you say what you said a little loud? I heard you, but say what you said, brother sister. Well, this is just so so relevant. Uh, when you you're referring to those. One example would be uh, William Miller, because anyway, William Miller um, preached the Second Coming of Christ, and um, but he but he was not he was not uh, uh, rooted in regard to the Seventh Day Sabbath, as it were. Mm -hmm. But but God used him still, yes, and still He will allow others who weren't able to keep the, the two Sabbaths, able, meaning they didn't know. And but see, the Lord supplies all our need. And we can see his our needs still being supplied on the way to heaven. Mm -hmm. Wow. In the seven days. Mm -hmm. All our need he supplied. Mm -hmm. And you know, like some say, well, do you have to literally be baptized in order to be saved? You know, everything that Jesus did, he did for us. Mm -hmm. He was baptized. And there are certain circumstances that, that uh, anyway, that's enough talking. I believe, you know, the uh, rest of day to do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Right. This righteousness by faith. And you know, not, not by, this is a great example of righteousness by faith and not by our works. And, you know, and I apologize, couldn't you, because you was leading to where I hope that, that, that we may get, but we may not get there tonight. I mean, this mm -hmm. afternoon, by God's grace. But I'm gonna pick it up. Brother Wayne said, "We not we not be we not gonna be standing around heaven talking about what we went through, what we did." She said, "She said, someone would ask us, say, and they, and and if we cannot recall because we look at heaven, we gonna say heaven is cheap enough. We will not be able to recall the experiences that we went through because God has wiped away all that from our mind, Amen. and we would say heaven is cheap enough. And so Amen. you know, and so William Miller, brothers and sisters, knew and understood what the message that God was giving him to." about the advent of Christ, we still had the right day but the wrong event. And so like Brother Wayne said, and, the, he, and people began to discourage him and he would begin to turn and God laid him to sleep so he could save him. Amen. And brother and sister, so therefore, as Brother Wayne so eloquent said, we need to think and talk about heaven more than what we do. If you can't, if you can't picture yourself in heaven, you won't be there. I cannot wait, brother. So I'm excited, but we must have a work to do here first because God has given us a message and there's going to be some people that can be brought in in the love of, do you remember when God, Jesus gave the parable of the, of the workers in the vineyard, go work in my vineyard, the ninth hour, 10th hour, 11th hour, 12th hour, you remember that? So therefore, brothers and sisters, some will come into the 11th hour who may not have now, cannot understand nor have taught the 2300 day message. That's going to get the same reward as those who came in early in the, in the, in the message of, of the gospel. But it will be a little different between those and the other ones. We'll see in a minute. <laughs> we are, again, we are in the class. Anybody got any more comments before we move on? I have a quick comment that, al that also confirms the fact that we shouldn't be dwelling on past sins. You know, right. we we if we fall you know in first john 1 9 if we sin we we confess it we get back up and we keep we keep pressing for, ahead but we don't we don't reflect and 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 get bogged down in looking back and and contemplating the past sins Amen. i'm beginning to read thank you sister oh brother mk i saw brother roy's hand went up yeah, I'm just going, you know, along with what Sister Michelle is saying. It says, when the Lord forgive us our sins, he don't remember them no more. Right. So we shouldn't remember them. I keep bringing them up. We shouldn't do that. Oh, that's right. That's right. Amen. Thank you, brother and sister. Okay, if no more comments, I begin to continue to read. We all entered the cloud together, and there were seven days of sin into the sea of glass. When Jesus brought the crowns, and with his own right hand, placed them on our heads. He gave us harps and of gold and song and palms of victory. Here on the sea of glass, the 144,000 stood in a perfect square. Some of them had very bright crowns. Remember I said that we'll see the ones that came in the 12th hour may not, they all have the same reward, but they may not be looked the same. 
Here it is. Here on the sea of glass, 144,000 stood in a perfect square. Some of them had very bright crowns, others not so bright. Some crowns appeared heavy with stars, while others had very few, but few. All were perfectly satisfied with their crown. Brothers and sisters, why were some crowns heavy with stars and some wasn't? But all were satisfied with their crowns. Why were some heavy with stars and some not? I, well, oh, go I believe it's similar to what you said earlier. That like that about the ones working in the vineyard. And some came in at a latter hour. So I feel like that's it's kind of synonymous to that, you know, them not having as many uh, in their crown as many things in their crown as the ones that had done a little bit more. I do. Yeah, I, I agree with Brother Roy. It was according to our works and and not it, it not necessarily based on when we come into the truth. Some some people may be in the truth, but you know, may not be doing what God would have them to do. So I think it's a mix of just according to our works. Now, what what do you mean? I mean, I know you say our works, but Christ works in us doing what God, but what do you mean? Can you simplify that? It's really, it's really, it's really just, it's, oh, let me just go and get to the point. Brothers and sisters, stars represents the soul that you are brought into the truth by God's grace. And the, and the, the ones you go out and witness and taught and share the gospel with, those, that's why some have more stars than others. Some, some people, you know, have brought many souls to the truth, amen? And some have not brought many. But guess what? But we all what? We all are happy and satisfied with our crown. Amen. But not jealous because someone won more souls to Christ than we did. And they're not envy because or just or hard because they've done more work than we did who only had a few crowns. But everyone, brothers and sisters, we're happy and satisfied with the stars in our crown. Amen. 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 You know, jealousy comes from Satan. Yes, amen. And they were all clothed with a glorious white mountain from that. Okay, let me. And they were all clothed with a glorious white mountain from their shoulders to their feet. Angels were all about us as we marched over the sea of glass to the gate of the city. Jesus raised his mighty glorious arm, laid hold on the pearly gate, swung it back on his glittering hinges, and said to us, You who have washed your robe in my blood, stood stiffly for the truth, for my truth. In the end, we all marched in and felt that we had a perfect right in the city. Brother and sister, you got a perfect right to the city, amen, by God's grace, by his blood, amen. Here we saw the tree of life and the throne of God. Out of the throne came a pure river of water, and on the either side of the river was the tree of life, and on one side of the river was a trunk of a tree, and a trunk on the other side of the river. Both have pure, transparent gold. At first, I thought I saw two trees. I looked again and saw that they were united at the top in one tree. So it was the tree of life on either side of the river of life. Its branches bowed to the place where we stood, and the fruit was glorious. It looked like gold mixed with silver. Amen. We all went under the tree and sat down to look at the glory of the place. When Listen to this. When Brother and Fitch and Stockman, those uh, came into the great uh, time, not a great time, when those who came to the great disappointment and witnessing for the truth, for those who came into the message. These are the brothers that she talks about. When Brother Fitch and Stockman, who had preached the gospel of the kingdom and whom God had laid in the grave to save them, came up to us and asked us what we had passed through while they were sleeping. We tried to call up our greatest trials, but they look so small compared with the far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that surrounded us that we could not speak them out. And we all cried out, hallelujah, heaven is cheap enough. And we touched our glorious harps and made heaven arches ring. CET, page six and one, paragraph one. After I came out of vision, everything seemed so changed. A gloom was spread over all that I beheld. Oh, how dark this world looked to me. I wept when I found myself here 
and felt homesick. I had seen a better world and, had it, and, and, and it had spoiled this for me. I related this vision to the believers in Portland who had full confidence that it was from God. Then they all believed that God had ch chosen this way after the great disappointment in October to comfort and strengthen his people. Brothers and sisters, we, every time October the 22nd come around, that day should not pass without us thinking about why are we here today? Brother MK. Yes, ma'am. Can you elaborate on the meaning of heaven is cheap enough for those that may not know in, in our YouTube family? Brother and sisters, can someone please elaborate on what it means to you what the Bible is saying when heaven is, cheap, heaven is cheap enough? Can someone expound on that, brothers and sisters, for us? For God, well, for God says, my yoke is easy. Okay. Is so to be cheap enough, it means that it's already been paid for. You just have to do the acceptance, the renewing of your mind and the transformation. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? I would say that uh, if they ask, the way I would explain it is Jesus has already done it all. <laughs> okay. And Anyone else? I mean, that's what I would say. <laughs> Anyone it, else? Anyone else? I know I've, I've read in Spirit of Prophecy, and I believe we've touched on it. Well, not, not in this stu these studies, but that in when you compared to the infinite price that Jesus paid on the cross, heaven is cheap enough. And it's basically another way of saying that really nothing can compare to the infinite price that Jesus paid, making it possible for us to even enter into the city. Amen. Thank you, sister. So in other words, brothers and sisters, what we are saying is that when your father and your mother and father forsake you because you live in present truth, it can't be it can't be compared to heaven. And there's a Bible text on that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother Wayne. Romans eight eighteen. Before I reckon that the sufferings of this present world or time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Not worthy the sufferings of this present time. Amen. Or not worthy to be mentioned as it were. Amen. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, <coughs> in other words, and, and amen. In other words, don't let nothing distract you from heaven, brothers and sisters. It can, like, was it not even worth it being mentioned? Brother Tony, you got something to say? Yeah, excuse me. Um, what about, I know this included, uh, suffering of a loved one, say a, a, a child or a grandchild or um, that seems to be, you know, that's it and it, and yet go through so much difficult physical um, with pain and such and such. Now, and, and I don't know, I, I, I hope I get to that, about the little children, about that. Uh, but if I don't, I will come, please make sure I come back to it. Well, I just said now and deal with it, so in case I won't, won't, won't pass by. Brothers and sisters, um, when we, as we keep reading, as the Bible teaches us, uh, that we know suffering, sin and suffering come from who? Satan. Satan, right? So therefore, we know that, that I, and I want to believe that I, it's in the Selective Message Book 3, I think it is. Selective Message Book 3. And I said this about a few weeks ago. I said it somewhere, I might have been... I think I might have been teaching in, in, uh, at the church, but anyway, I know I made this comment that, uh, you know, like Brother Wayne just read in Romans, that the serpent of the world can't even can be not even worth to be mentioned. In other words, what God, what has God stored in, uh, what God has stored for us. So when we see little children suffer, and 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 in pain, and the, and the Lord allowing them to be go to sleep, now I'm going to put them to sleep. Then, brothers, if the parents are faithful, if the mother is faithful, Spirit of Prophecy say the little children wings from the day of, the day of a, a resurrection, the little children wing, wings from their dusty bed into their parents' arms. 
and she gave it. She she was writing it to her sister. She had a twin sister. She was writing a twin sister. Uh, ch the young child died, and she told her twin sister, "God said that if she's faithful, the child was raised out of the out of the uh, dusty bed and winged into her arm." And as we read, and I hope I don't know if I'm gonna get to it today because I I think I, I this is so joyful, brother and sister, and so much that. She said she saw little children. She saw people walking in heaven, had red garments around that borders of that garment and, and asked what that was. And they said, those are the martyrs for my cause. And she saw little ones with red garments around that, around that garment as well, little ones. And she said the little ones would climb on, on the trees and climb up the rocks. And then, but sometimes they didn't have to climb because they had wings, they could fly, but they chose to climb. Well, sister, heaven is, Heaven is cheaper now. You know, you know, I'm talking about the, uh, this is a word probably not in the dictionary. It's made up. <laughs> the, 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 the pricity of heaven. It's just so, so great and marvelous because of the, of God's ways. His way is perfect. Wow. Brother Wayne, if you, amen, if you keep saying the word price, it's either been a dictionary before long. I can recall, I recall some, I got somebody, I know somebody can, can witness to this. I just say, hey, you know, we, you know, years ago, you know, let, you know, people go, we're going to have a conversation, you know, people conversate. Oh, that's not a word. I say, it will be a word sooner or later. Trust me. It will be a word. Conversate. And guess what? That word is in the dictionary. So price tea is not far off. Trust me. <laughs> Amen. So let us keep reading. The Spirit of the Lord attend, uh, to comfort, uh, let me go back. They all believe that God had chosen this way after the great disappointment in October to comfort and strengthen his people. The Spirit of the Lord attended the testimony and the solemnity, solemnity of eternity rested upon us. An unspeakable awe filled me that I so young and feeble should be chosen as the instrument by which God would give light to his people. While under the power of the Lord, I was filled with joy, seeming to, surround, seeming to be surrounded by holy angels in the glorious courts of heaven, where all is peace and gladness, and it was sad and bitter to change to wake up to the realities of mortal life. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hmm. Any comments, brothers and sisters, before we move on? Any comments? These are the, the very thoughts that causes God's life to be expressed in us. And, and uh, but these these thoughts keep us on the on, on the path with the light shining from behind, keep us on that straight and narrow path Amen. unto heaven, Amen. even from now. From now and henceforth. Amen. Like, like you say, like you say, Elder, Elder Jones, that you you meditate upon the word. We can do a lot of studying, a lot of reading, but it's, it's and it's in it's in Psalms somewhere. But I don't know, I can't finish the sentence. But but it's when we meditate upon the word, that's when the word seeps into the soul, finds residence. Amen. Well, this is chapter seven of the new same book, A Vision of the New Earth. A vision of the new earth of Jesus as our head, we all descended from the sea down to this earth. On a great and mighty mountain, which could not bear Jesus up, and part of the sun, and there was a mighty plain. Then we looked up and saw the great city with 12 foundations and 12 gates, three on each side, and an angel at each gate. We all cried out, the city, the great city is coming. It's coming down from God out of heaven. And it came and settled on the place where we stood. Then we began to look at the glorious things outside of the city. There I saw most glorious houses that had the appearance of silver, supported by four pillars set with pearls, most glorious to behold. These were to be inhabited by the saints. Amen. And each was a God. God said he was going to make a new heaven and a new earth, brothers and sisters. So we're not going to be in heaven for, the, for eternity. We have, a new, we have a new earth to be inhabited, amen? There I saw the most glorious houses 
that had the appearance of silver, supported by four pillars set with pearls, most glorious to behold. These were to be inhabited by the saints, and each was a golden shell. I saw many of the saints go into the houses, take off their glittering crowns, and lay them on the shelf, then go out into the field by the houses to do something with the earth, not as we have to do with the earth here. No, no. A glorious light shone all about their heads, and they will continue shouting and offering praises to God. Page 62, paragraph 2. I saw another field full of all kinds of flowers. Hey, Sister Mary, as I plucked them, I cried out, they will never fade. Next, I saw a field of tall grass, most glorious to behold. It was living green and had a reflection of silver and gold as it waved proudly to the glory of King Jesus. Then we entered a field full of all kinds of beasts, lions, the lamb, the leopard, and the wolf, all together in perfect union. We passed through the midst of them, and they followed us, and they followed on peacefully afterward. Then we entered a wood, not like the dark woods we have here, no, but light and all glorious. The branches of the trees waved to and fro, and we all cried out. We, we would dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. We passed through the woods, but we were on way, for we were on our way to Mount Zion. Page six, uh, paragraph, page sixty-two, paragraph three. As we were traveling along, we met a company who was gazing at the glories of the place. I noticed red as a, I noticed red as a border on their garments. Their crowns was brilliant. Their robes was pure white. As we greeted them, I asked Jesus, "Who were they? Who they were?" He said, "They were martyrs." They had been slain for him. With them was an innumerable company of little ones. They also, brother, brother Tony, with them was an innumerable company of little ones. They also had a hymn of red on their garments. Mount Zion was just before us, and on the mount was a glorious temple, and a body with seven other mountains on which grew roses and lilies. Brother and sister, you see that seven mountains? Who tried to bring the city? like that on the earth who try to bring the city like that the devil wants to be so much like god he chose rome and sets on seven mountains mother sister because he knew that the city set on seven mountains in heaven but the devil always tried to be like god i saw the little one and it said uh uh, Mount Zion was just before us, and on the mount was a glorious temple, and round about it were seven other mountains, on which grew roses and lilies. And I saw the little ones climb, or if they chose, use their little wings and fly to the top of the mountain and pluck the never fading flowers. There were all kinds of trees around the temple to beautify the place the box, the pine, the fire, the oil, and the myrtle, the pomegranate, and the fig tree bowed down with the weight of his timely figs. These made the place all over glorious. And as we and as we were about to enter the holy temple, Jesus raised his lovely voice and said, only the 144,000 entered this place. And we shouted, hallelujah. Page 63, paragraph 2. This temple was supported by seven pillars, all of transparent gold set with pearls most glorious. The wonderful things I there saw, I cannot describe. Oh, that I could talk in the language of Canaan. Then could I tell of a, little, of a little of the glory of the better world. I saw their tables of stone which in which the names of the 144,000 144, were engraved in the letters of gold. After we beheld the glory of the temple, we went out and Jesus left us and we went to the city. Soon we heard the lovely voice again saying, come my people, you have come out of great tribulation and done my will. Suffer for me, come into supper for I will gird myself and serve you. We shouted, hallelujah, glory, and enter into the city. Page 62, paragraph 1. I saw a table of pure silver. It was many miles in length, yet our eyes could extend over it. I saw the fruit of the tree of life, the manna, almonds, figs, pomegranates, grapes, and many other kinds of fruit. Page 64, paragraph 2. I asked Jesus to let me eat of the fruit. He said, not now. Those who eat of the fruit of this land go back to the earth no more. But in a little while, if faithful, you shall both eat of the fruit of the tree of life and drink of the water of the fountain. And he said, you must go back to the earth again and relate 
to others what I have revealed to you. Then an angel bore me gently down to the dark world. Paragraph, page 64, paragraph 3. Brother and sisters. What's the name of the book? You read it for Christian, a book. Christian experience and uh, teaching. Yeah, CET. Christian, Christian, Christian experience and teachings. And, and give me a page again because that reminds me of this. I'm telling you, this is, this is what I got out of it. Uh, of what was read earlier that you read. Um, we'll be up in heaven picking this and that piece of fruit or whatever mm -hmm. it is we're picking. And we'll, we'll, every time we take, we'll reach down with our right hand and say, mm -hmm. glory. And then we pick, we reach and pick something with our left hand. Left hand, yeah. Hallelujah. This is what I got out of We were saying, glory. Hallelujah. As we reach down, that, that's what we'll be doing in the guards. There won't be any sweating nope. or tears. Nope. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's what I got. Amen. Give, it a, give it a page again or somewhere uh, up in there. It's a uh, start on page 64, uh, 57 down the set. The last page I was uh, reading from was 64. Uh, wow. The last wow. page was 64. Uh, paragraph Thank 3. You. Amen. Thank you. Chapter, chapter 7 of that book. Brothers and sisters, I did not get this book. I think it's Heavenly Places. I think. Let me. I want to get this. Let me go back and get this book. Where what time it is? Let me. Let me go back. And, I want to read a little thing out of this book, and I'm gonna go back and give the book while we do our testimonies. The HBN. I I can go real quick and find it if I need to. Let me see. Okay. Who will be there? Christ trophies. And that day the redeemed will shine forth in the glory of the Father and the Son. The angels touching our golden hearts will welcome the King and his trophies of victory. Those who have washed and made them made white in the blood of the Lamb. Those who have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. A song of trump will peal forth, filling all heaven. Christ has conquered. He enters the heavenly courts, accompanied by the redeemed ones, to witness that his mission of suffering and sacrifice has not been in vain. Jesus ascended to the Father as a representative of the human race, and God will bring those who reflect his image to behold and share with his glory. Testimony for the Church, Volume 9, page 285 and 286. Those who share Christ's suffering, those who are partakers of Christ's suffering, will also be partakers of his consolation and at last shares of his glory. Acts of the Apostles, page 261. God surprises. Many will be in heaven who their neighbors suppose will never enter there. Listen to what I'm saying. Many would be in heaven who their neighbors suppose would never enter there. Christ of the legend, page 72. And then we go down as we come to, I, I got so much to read. Maybe we'll, another time we'll come together and we'll finish, continue to read. This was a consolation letter, brothers and sisters, to those who has fallen asleep before we are translated. Dear brother, I hardly know what to say to you. The news of your wife's death was to me overwhelming. I could hardly believe I could hardly believe it, and can hardly believe it now. God gave me a view last Sabbath night, which I will write. It's being heavenly places. I think eighty-five paragraph one. I saw that she was sealed and will come up at the voice of God and stand upon the earth and would be with the hundred forty-four thousand. I saw we need not mourn for her; she would rest in a time of trouble, and all that we could mourn was for. I was lost in being deprived of her company. I saw her death would result in good. Letter 10, 1850, quoted in the Selected Message, Book 2, page 263. Those who come to God in faith. God justly condemns all who do not make Christ their personal Savior, but he pardons every soul whom he comes to him in faith and enables him to work the works of God and through faith to be one with Christ. Jesus said of these, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. This unity brings perfection of character, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. John 17, 23. The Lord had made every provision whereby man may be full, may have full and free salvation, and be complete in him. God designed that his children should have the bright beams of the sun of righteousness, and that all may have the light of truth. God has provided salvation for the world at an infinite cost 
even through the gift of his only begotten son. The apostle acts, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. Romans 8, 32. Then if we are not saved, the fault would not be on the part of God, but on our part, that we have failed to cooperate with the divine agencies. Our will has not coincided with God's will. The Revere and Herald, November 1st, 1892, quoted in the Selected Message, Book 1, page 375. Those who look to Jesus, he who is trying to reach heaven, listen to this, brother and sister. He who is trying to reach heaven by his own works and keeping the law is an attempting an impossibility. Man cannot be saved without obedience, but his works should be not of himself. Christ should work in him to will and do of his good pleasure. If a man could save himself by his own works, he might have something in himself in which he to rejoice. The effort that man makes in his own strength to obtain salvation is represented by the offering of Cain. All that man can do without Christ is polluted with selfishness and sin. But that which is wrought through faith is acceptable to God. Amen. When we seek to gain heaven through the merits of Christ, the soul makes progress. Looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we may go on from strength to strength, from victory to victory. For through Christ, the grace of God has worked for our complete salvation. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Living faith enables the possessor to lay hold on the merits of Christ, enables him to derive great comfort and satisfaction from the plan of salvation that we're bearing her on July 1st, 1890, according to the Selected Message, Book 1, page 364. Those who cling to Jesus, our Savior is the latter was Jacob saw, who's rested on the earth and whose topmost rounds reached the highest heaven. This shows the appointed method of salvation. If any of us are finally saved, it would be by clinging to Jesus as the rounds of a ladder. Testimony for the church, book five, page 539. Amen, brothers. I'm going to stop there and as we close off the Sabbath. But there's so much more that I have that by the grace of God, I will read. Uh, the Lord permits us to come back together. Amen. Amen. Anybody got any questions or thoughts as I look? for this book, HBN, and I didn't, anybody got any comments or thoughts, anything you want to add? Can you repeat what you read beginning with man cannot be saved by his own obedience and ending with when when the merits of Christ, when we gain heaven by the merits of Christ, our soul, I, I missed kind of the crux of that. Give me one second. Okay, give me one second. Let me. Uh, okay. All right. Let me find that part. And you were in selected messages. Volume one, page 375, I thought. All right, I'm right there. Okay. I'll go back to the top of that paragraph. Okay. Uh, those who come to God in faith. Well, okay. The Lord has made every provision whereby man may have full and free salvation and be complete in him. God designed that the children should have the bright beams of the sun and righteousness, that all may have the light of truth. God has provided salvation for the world at the infinite cost, even through the gift of his only begotten son. The apostle acts, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we, how shall he not with him also freely give us of all things? Romans 832. Then if we are not saved, the fault will not be on the part of God, but on our part, that we have failed to cooperate with the divine agencies. Our will has not coincided with God's will. Revere and Herald, November 1st, 1892. Select the message, book one, page 375. Those who look to Jesus, he who, he who is trying to reach heaven by his own works and keeping the law is an attempting a possibility. Man cannot be saved without obedience, but his works should not be of himself. Christ should work in him to will and do of his good pleasure. If a man could save himself by his own works, he might have something in himself in which to rejoice. The effort that man makes in his own strength 
to obtain salvation is represented by the offering of Cain. All that man can do without Christ is polluted with selfishness and sin, but that which is wrought through faith is accepted to God. When we seek to gain heaven through the merits of Christ, the soul makes progress, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that we may go on from strength to strength, from victory to victory. For through Christ, the grace of God has worked out our complete salvation. Without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Living faith enables the possessor to lay hold on the merits of Christ and enables him to derive great comfort and satisfaction from the plan of salvation. Revere and Herald, uh, July 1st, 1890, Selected Message, uh, Book 1, Paragraph, page 364. Those who cling to Jesus, our Savior is the latter, which Jacob saw, whose base rested upon the earth and whose topmost rounds reached the highest heaven. This shows the appointed method of salvation. If any of us who are finally saved, it would be by clinging to Jesus as the rounds of a ladder. Testimonies for the church, page 5 and 5, page 539. Did I read that? Did you get it? Or was it, was it up further? Yes, thank you. Okay. And uh, but any comments while I go back? And I want to I want to get that book, HBN. I want to make sure that I give you the book. Any comments while I research what this book that, that I want to share? I want to make sure that we got HBN. HBN. Any okay, I think this is it. Yeah, the book. <laughs> the book is called Heaven. <laughs> Uh, the book that I'm reading from is called Heaven, and also the other, all those other things I gave it in those other books too. But all that I read it can be found in in, in the book called Heaven by Lynn G. White. Brothers, is any comments as we think about heaven? So as we read, and there's so much other stuff that I wanted to get to, but because of the time, you know, give us another reason to come back together, Amen. Mm -hmm. So, brothers and sisters, as Please, I want us to respond if the Lord would allow us to respond. Well, I think you just kind of you know, made it clear that righteousness is by faith and you know, the salvation by Jesus. But faith without works is dead, too. There still should be a renewal of our minds and our hearts. So, so it's a great lesson. I appreciate it. It's God. So, Brother said, did we, did, can we get, did we get a glimpse of heaven, what it'd be like? Can we get a can we get a glimpse of what heaven's going to be? Can we pitch? Can we let's think about let's think about heaven more, brothers. If we put if we think about earth, if we think about earthly things, our mind cannot be in heavenly things. We should think about heavenly things, brothers and sisters, so our mind will be off the earth. Amen. We should think about heavenly Canaan, brothers and sisters, a better place where no more pain, no more sickness, no more death, where we see that the dead loved ones. Who is who has died in the faith, brothers and sisters? God will raise up, and we all will be taken to the city in the new in, the, in heaven, brothers and sisters. Never depart from loved ones anymore, brothers and sisters. When when the message go forth, when the loud cry go forth, when the third angel message swells into a loud cry and the final outpouring of the holy rain, brothers and sisters, when that time comes and the, and the son of law is passed and Jesus ceases intercession in heaven. And then we all go through the time of trouble, brothers and sisters. And then when Christ comes in a small cloud from the east, by the signs of a man's hand, is a black cloud. And as we go closer, it becomes a white brother cloud. And brothers and sisters, we see Jesus. And then we say, well, Lord, this is our God whom he awaited for us. He's come to save us. No more pain, no more sickness, no more death, brothers and sisters. We always be translated. The same Jesus that translates you into his likeness will be the same Jesus that described them and they used to hide us from the lamb of the throne that sits upon the throne. A lamb, brothers and sisters, a lamb. The same consuming fire that transformed you into the likeness of Christ, the same consuming fire destroys them, brothers and sisters. So let's think about heaven, brothers and sisters. Let's dwell on heavenly things. When things become in this world grows dim and trouble comes and trouble will come and family will forsake you, friends will forsake you, church members will betray you, but Jesus will never betray you. He will never forsake, forsake you or leave you. And then, brothers and sisters, that's what we think. When things get dim and before things get dim, let's keep our minds on Christ so when things get dim, we can go through it 
And Jesus says, like Ken said earlier, Brother Ken said earlier, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Amen. Any comments, questions, or thoughts? Hey, do we have anyone that would close us out with prayer? Before Brother Roy, right before, right after Brother Roy sing, now the day is over. Would there be any testimony to prayer requests? Spoken or unspoken. I have a I have a comment just on when it comes to thinking on things eternal, like what we all what we just um heard through spirit of prop from spirit of prophecy. You know, it I think about the things that excite the world. Um, you know, and I could just go down the list of things events that people spend thousands of dollars to attend and things that people, you know, go and buy a, a new dress or get their hair and the nails done, you know, whatever for a special occasions. I, I know there's a, without going into any detail, there's a big birthday party that I won't be attending, but that's coming up. And um, everyone is, you know, a lot of invitations were sent out. A big venue has been reserved. And um, it's all anybody's talking about. Um, but I, hearing, you know, when I think about heaven, you know, th that topic alone, like Brother MK is always saying, when we, when we talk about getting to heaven, everybody should say amen. And I think there's a lack of, and for my, I'm speaking for myself, there's a real lack of um, excitement and anticipation and joy when we think about heaven. And so I think there is a need to spend more time reading about it and studying um, and meditating, to, as Brother Wange said earlier, um, you know, from the standpoint, when I think about, I don't, when I think about those things, sometimes it isn't, and I don't know why it might, It I don't think it's a lack of imagination. I think it's just sometimes when I, it seems so f not far away, but just um, like it's, it's just not, it's so far removed from what we experience here on earth. But I, I do get encouraged um, when I hear about the other worlds where there are people, there are believers that are living perfect in strict obedience. And so that, that definitely encourages me, but um, I praise God for just continuing to, show us the blueprint that here's how we're going to make it in. I do believe that there's going to come a time when we're going to wish we had studied heaven more to have, because that's going to be the only thing that will keep us when things get really, really rough. And, and we can, if we have heaven in our hearts, and the Bible speaks of this, um, we won't be moved. You know, many, many, TKO your parson. Y'all know what that is? No. Many, many, to kill your parson. Oh, yes. That's in, Re that's in Revelation. Daniel. Oh, Daniel, yeah. That's when the Belshazzar gave a feast, invited everyone to come and took the things of God and celebrated with all those people. But Daniel was not invited to the party. And there was a, there was a, a bloodless hand writing on the wall. Meanie, 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 to kill you, Farson. Daniel 6, that this the interpretation of the thing, meaning me, God had numbered the kingdom and finished it to kill. God weighed in the balance and our found warning, raised, 
for peace. The meat kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So, brothers and sisters, don't be leery because they didn't invite you or invited you or didn't invite you to a party or a feast. Because we need to we need to wonder why would they invite us? But you know, if God ain't there, we shouldn't want to be there. Amen. Amen. So now we have the song sung by Brother Ross. Now the day is over. <clears throat> now the day is over. Night is drawing nigh, shadows of the evening steal across the sky. Father, give the weary, come and sweep with us with the tender blessings. May our lips close through the long night watches. May the angels spread their white wings above me, watching well my bed. 